Hi, welcome to shumitakari.com. I'm Anuja and today I'm going to show you how to make whole wheat pita bread at home. Amazingly simple and it's so easy. You'll wonder why you have not been making them all these years. So let's just get down to it. So first things first, we ha I have half a cup of warm water. So it's pretty much like bath water. You don't want it any hotter than that because we're going to be um, mixing the yeast in this and you don't want the yeast to die. If it's very hot water, it's not going to activate. Half cup of water. I'm using highly active yeast, uh, basically rapid rise yeast. You can use the regular one also. So we're going to use one teaspoon of yeast, half a teaspoon of sugar, mix it and we're just going to let it sit aside for about 10 minutes till you start seeing it froth. So over here we have whole wheat flour or atta that we all have we make our chapatis with of course traditionally all purpose flour is used just trying to make things a little easier and a little more uh, healthier for us and our families. So we have two cups of flour over here which is approximately 300 grams. So to this I'm going to add half a teaspoon of salt. I'm using kosher salt. You can use any. Once the salt is mixed in I'm going to form a little well in the middle. Okay meanwhile our yeast has done its thing. As you can see it's kind of almost spooky but what you're going to do is now we're going to add in the yeast to the flour in the center and just keep mixing it. Now obviously it needs more liquid, more moisture. We're going to add in little water at a time. Now this process can also be done in a food processor. So all of us who are used to making chapatis, it, this part is very easy. But here's the difference. We need to make it a little on the sticky side than your atta for the chapatis. So literally it needs to stick to your fingers. So I used half cup of water for the yeast and I used another three quarters cup to form this. Now there's going to be a little bit of variation here and there and that's okay. So once you see everything come together, what we're going to do is we're going to keep this aside, take another bowl and we're going to add in about a tablespoon of olive oil to it. And we're going to coat the oil all the way through this bowl. So once the bowl is coated, we're going to transfer the flour to this bowl. And we're just going to flip it around so that there's oil all around so there's enough room for the dough to grow. And here's another trick that I always like to do anytime that I'm uh, making um, any kind of dough that needs to be to rise. I just take a knife, I coat it with a little bit of oil, carefully of course, and then I just cut it through the center. So that way it has additional space for the dough to grow. Then I'm just going to take a little towel or saran wrap or cling wrap whatever you want and cover it up and allow it to sit for at least 30 minutes till it rises. It's best to put it in the oven of course with it turned off that way it's controlled temperature and and since I'm using rapid rise yeast half an hour will be plenty but if you are in a little colder place it may take a little longer um, and if you're using regular yeast also so it might take a little longer than that about an hour or so off it goes. So we are back. Look at that. So there's no more line. You can see some spots that means the yeast is activated and it's risen and look at it. It's just going to, the moment I touch it, it's going to just deflate. Perfect indicator that it's ready. So now what we're going to do is we're going to knead it a little bit more. And if you remember, it's, the dough is very sticky. If you remember from before, it's, I honestly couldn't even touch it without it sticking to my fingers. I'm going to take approximately about a half a cup of flour, our same atta, and I'm going to dust the counter and I'm going to put a little at a time. So if you've noticed, I put like a, a quarter cup over there and I'm going to just get the dough all together and I'm going to just pour it out. Make sure you dust your hands and we're going to work this, the flour into the dough. It's really sticky still and that's okay. We're just going to slowly work it pull it and then fold it in, pull it and fold it in, pull it and fold it in. And actually you will notice that um, the dough is now getting more pliable and it's, it's uh, coming together. It's not sticking as much to your fingers as it was before. So that's perfect. Now this is going to take a little time and a little bit of patience and that's absolutely fine. What this does is basically it's um, getting all the glutens activated. Okay, and once you see everything starting to come together, we have used up the full half cup of flour. 
back to my board. I'm going to add a little bit more flour to the board, divide the dough into portions. Same thing I'm going to do, I'm going to just coat it in the atta or in the flour and I'm just going to take it to the, from the edges and I'm going to push it to the sides, push it to the sides and that way what happens is it's a nice ball from this side and it's like a little scrunched up thing from this side. There you go. This is the opposite side. So I'm going to just put it here. Now you can make the dough balls as big or as small as you want. When I'm making pita pockets, I try to make them a little bigger. That way there is enough place to stuff uh, stuffing in it. Uh, plus when they're a little bigger, they tend to puff up a little bit better. This makes about 9 to 10. So here you go. I'm going to now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover it and I am going to let it sit for about 10 minutes uh, and then come back to them and then roll them out. So meanwhile, I'm preheating my oven at 450 degrees Fahrenheit and 230 degrees centigrade. And it has the pan that I'm going to be heating, uh, that I'm going to be cooking the pita bread in in that. So that needs to be hot as well. You're going to make the pita, put it in the hot pan and then it's going to uh, cook. So make sure you have the oven preheated and make sure you have the tray that you're baking it on also in there. So it's been 10 minutes and the, the dough balls have risen. So I'm going to just open up one side and I'm going to start rolling them. I'm going to take a, put a little bit of more whole wheat flour on this and I'm going to just press it down. Just start rolling like you would to a chapati. Now try not to make it as thin as a chapati. You don't want that. You want it, it needs to have a little more you know thickness to it and you can make as big as you want or as little as you want. So I mean I would think this, say the thickness should be will be about approximately like the like when you've stuffed a aloo paratha and it's got stuffing in it and it's about that thick. Transfer this into another plate a tray and I'm going to bake it once I've got two of them ready. And now this is just a tray and I'm going to take it to the oven and I'm going to put it on the hot uh, tray over there. The oven is hot. I'm going to open it. Ooh, smoking hot. I'll take the tray out. Transfer the pita bread on that. Put it in. Close it. So it'll take approximately about uh, four minutes or so, four or five minutes on uh, one side. Then I'm going to flip it around and let it cook on, on the other side also for just about a minute or two. Now everybody's ovens are different, so keep an eye on it. And if you notice that the tray is at the bottom of the oven, it's not in the middle. You want it at the bottom, closest to the element. And once you see them puffing up, I'm going to flip them around just for another couple of minutes. I'm just going to wait for them to get a little color. Now that's optional, it's entirely up to you. If you want to keep them white, you can. Some people like a little color on them. There you go, the pita bread is done. Look at it. See, if you don't give it color, it's more like, looks more like this. That's, I gave it a little bit of color and they're perfect. So I'm going to just cut one and show you. It's actually their best had fresh. Look at this. There you go. Look at that. It's perfect for a filling. For some falafel, some chicken, anything you want. Isn't it great? So let's give it a try. Mm. Well, technically, needs to be had with something. So I'm going to make some other stuff along and enjoy these. Of course, again, serve it with um, tahini, with hummus, with falafel. The other thing you can do is anytime you're making stuff at home, you can also flavor them. You can add additional garlic into the dough. You can add, add some um, fresh parsley, some seasoning. Fabulous. What great variations. If you like this recipe and you'd like to see more from us, please don't forget to subscribe. It's free and you'll be the first to know anytime we release a video. And enjoy the whole wheat pita breads at home and join us again on another episode of ShowMeTheCurry.com adding a pinch of spice to your life.